Welcome everyone. This is a Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today we are on October 22, 2024. Oh, I'm sorry, I can So, who do we have today around the table? We have Mark Waite, Kevin Martins, uh, Damien Duportal, uh, and myself. Okay, let me try to find my mouse. It disappeared. Okay, there it is. Now, you go. Uh, Okay. Oh, I still have some USB problems, so if ever I disappear or freeze or anything, <laughs> feel free to take the lead. Today on the agenda, we have the end of support for Java 11. Yes, we talked about it two weeks ago, but it's still relevant today. We'll talk about the container image updates for the Jenkins controller and agents. We'll talk about the work in progress on the images. Uh, maybe a few words about the Spring project and the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. Uh, new JDK versions. Uh, maybe a few words about the GNLP agent JDK 8. And if we still have time, why not talk about the Risk 5 status for the Jenkins ecosystem? Anything you would like to add to the agenda, folks? No, that's a great agenda. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mark. So, end of support for Java 11 is not new. You already talked a lot about that, Mark, uh, two weeks ago. But yes, we dropped the um, Java 11 support for the controller repo weeks ago. And the weekly 2.463 also dropped the support for Java 11. So the next LTS, which should happen around, no, not around, on the 30th of October, uh, will also drop uh, support for Java 11. So, uh, two weeks ago, you were asking Mark, when should agent containers stop updates for Java 11? And you proposed to drop them uh, last week, and you did so, by the way, in the... Where did I put that? Yes, in the Docker, Docker agent. It has already been done for the controller and for the Docker agent and Docker SSH agent. It was merged last week. Right. However, this is where yep. Damien is a, is a good resource to have available to us. We've now got a new release of remote of Jenkins remoting. And because we have a new release of Jenkins remoting, it's time, I think, for us to roll a new version of the agent, release a new version of the agent. However, I don't remember how to do it. And so maybe getting a tutorial from Damien on how we do that, because I should remember it. I think he and I have talked about it before, and it's no longer fresh on my mind. Yeah, so... But that's true, and it should be written because if it's only on my mind, then it's a failure on long term. So yeah, yes. I agree. We need a tutorial, record, and then write something. I agree. Okay, so, I, so maybe mm -hmm. go ahead, Damian. I I was retaining publishing anything. I wanted to wait for today for this meeting, mm -hmm. just to have confirmation that we can safely release the new agent version without GDK eleven. So looks like it is, and I can trigger release for both SSH and all agents. Well, so let's double check with others. But from my perspective, I see no reason for us to release the new remoting with Java 11 support because Java 11 support, we, we declared to users that by, sept by September 30th, we would stop supporting Java 11. And we've been warning them for months about that, that we're well past September 30th. And so I don't feel at all guilty that we're st we're stopping support of Java 11 and the agent container images. Makes sense. So Bruno and Kevin, Kevin, you're as probably as good as we're going to get in terms of a representative for users with your documentation role. Are you okay with us stopping now instead of eight days from now when controller when the controller releases with no Java 11? I think that makes sense especially with the upcoming LTRS release and everything else that's already in place. Great. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. And if people don't use latest, nobody will have will be in trouble. <laughs> but we do know that some people use latest. Yeah, so be careful about the latest stuff. It's not about the images we are speaking of. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was something, GNLP, Agent, yep. GDK8. It's on... You're right. Yep. It's not about agent images. Um... Another uh, good reason for releasing with the new remoting version, Mark, is that the breaking chain will be way more visible than if it's only the same version as the previous one with only right. a package iteration, right? 
right it's it's a and i like that right because having having big long string that's the same from previous release a change from nine to ten in the middle of the string is not as obvious as hey we changed the leftmost edge of that string it's a it's a it's clearly a new a new version number yeah, so the timing for the remoting release is really great. I'm delighted. Okay, so then I'm triggering the dependency update system manually. It runs once a week during weekend. I'm going to trigger it so we can have the pull request with the new remoting and we are ready to roll out both SSH and inbound agent with the breaking change. Okay. Any objection? And I just touch, no, no objection from me. I just touch several of the pull requests to set correct labels on them so that they should appear in the change log correctly if we're lucky. Which looks like the case based on what I see on the draft uh, release changer. Good job. Okay. Thanks you folks. So, so Damien, there are two different release patterns. Docker, I guess you'll, t you, you can, we could talk about that later in the meeting, the, mm -hmm. the release yep. process. It doesn't, so, Bruno, if you're willing, let's put an item uh, releasing an agent container because Damien, maybe, are you willing to do the tutorial today, Damien, on what the process yes, is? Yes, absolutely. At the end of the meeting, we will Great. release both agents with a recording. So then the information will be shared directly Perfect. and we will have the record for that as a good step. First step. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. And the end of the meeting. Yep. Um, okay, now for the container image updates regarding the Jenkins controller, of course, no new LTS, so no new controller image for the LTS, but I've seen a new, not image, but a new, a new war for the Jenkins uh, release candidate. Mm -hmm. And I've seen lots of changes in the change log between you, Mark, and you, Kevin, uh, regarding the change log of the 2.479.1 that looks like a very important release for the Jenkins project, right? And it is. Absolutely. It is. I'm afraid it is. Uh, now for the weeklies, I had not seen anything groundbreaking in the 2.481 and the 242. Oh, I'm losing my mouse. That's why I'm having trouble uh, following up. So this one uh, it was not ready when I tried it. So anything important? Not really. Okay, just the bump of the Debian bookworm line is version. Okay, nothing major. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, I'm struggling with the mouse, sorry. Uh, Okay, it looks like I lost my mouse. Uh, it's back, is it? No, uh, that was bound to happen. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to do something about this USB problem of mine. Nice. Now, I have seen no container image updates for the Jenkins agent and not that much work in progress either. The only thing I saw, uh, I told about that earlier, was the removal of the JDK 11 support in the Docker agent and Docker SSH agent. So the whole, no, it would, I would, I was about to say the whole ecosystem is moving to JDK 17, but that's not true because that's not the case for plugins yet, but at least our Docker images. Our and, and supported Docker images, but it but it is very much true for certain key plugins, and and there there is a process that we've started right over the course of the next six to nine months, many plugins will switch to Java seventeen. And you already did uh, lots of the work last year, or at the beginning of this year, Mark, when we you and I migrated lots of plugins to JDK twenty one uh, already, right. if I'm not mistaken. Right, the work so, is not done yet. And and Darren Pope and I are doing tutorials now on what it means to do the rest of the work, and we're going to have more fun with that because there's there's still other things. Jakarta EE nine is non trivial, right? It 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 reads it needs some additional changes, and Spring Security may need some changes, and all sorts of fun. Yeah, I was hoping for um, 
seamless transition thanks to tools like Open Rewrite or the plugin modernizer, but there Which, still has to be a human being uh, doing the grunt work. But Open Rewrite is awesome at doing exactly this kind of thing, and it does very, very well. So Darren and I have been using it multiple times. It, it works that. very great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, speaking of end of life of uh, JDK 11, moving to JDK uh, 17 and so on, we also made the um, uh, step of uh, forgetting about Spring 5 and going to uh, Spring Security 6 and so on. So this was delivered a few weeks ago, I would say. It was in September, if I'm not uh, uh, mistaken. And I haven't heard anybody complaining. We see maybe some bugs or limitations or changes here and there, but nothing major. So, Mark, should we consider that done, more or less, or will we wait until we release the next LTS to see that everything is working accordingly to what we scheduled? Yeah, I'd, I'd leave this on our agenda for one more time because I want, I want that release out the door, 2.479.1. Oh, yes. Uh, two weeks from now, it will be already delivered, released. So, correct. Yes. Yes. We'll talk about That's this actually... two weeks from now. <laughs> right. So, so eight days from now, it will be re delivered. So, yep. Cool. On the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan, nothing new, I guess, Mark? No, I need to, I need to do some additional writing, but the, the, the doing part has overtaken the writing part for now. Yeah, of course. So much to do. Thank you. Um, I'm a user of SDK Man. I don't know if other people are using that. I use that uh, also for the plugin modernizer. It's bundled in our tool. We use it to try to compile plugins with the very old versions of JDK, then moving slowly to JDK 21, whatever. So this tool told me a few days ago that we had new versions of uh, the JDK for Timurin, and I was hoping to see some automatic uh, PRs for the whole Jenkins project moving to JDK 17 and 21 for the Docker image and so on. But I didn't see anything, so I did not take the time to check that our GitHub actions were working, or if it's just that it will happen in a day or two. But it, did any one of you see anything? Yes. Oh, uh, da so Damien, just... Damien was maybe going to speak up, but I'll speak up. Damien, are you okay if I speak up? Yes, I will speak second because okay, I have a so... new one on this topic. Oh, good. All right. So, so the the machinery that we have is working exactly as we hoped because it's detected that System 390 version of 2105 is not available yet, and it's detected That's that why. System 390 version of 17013 is not available yet. And it's detected that System 390 version of 11.0.25 is not available yet. And and so it's actually behaving exactly as we hoped, as far as I can tell. Now, Damien may refute my my bold claim, but, but no, as far as I can tell, it's working exactly right. Absolutely. Uh, we are updating on the infrastructure because we don't put such a constraint. But for the public images, Mark uh, is good. There is another thing at stake here, is that since uh, two or three days, the um, update CLI manifest checking for the UB9 latest version with a custom shell script is failing. And the error is not the script itself, but it's the response from the Red Hat is not uh, parsable by GQ. I don't know why. Oh my, sorry. So uh, looks like they have a weird behavior on their own or there is something I don't understand. So for now, I'm going to, uh, in order to have the GDK to be updated when needed and the remoting, I will disable this for now. Okay. Uh, I will give it a try nonetheless. Uh, not trying to keep it up and running, but uh, just to see it and understand what's going on. Um, yes, it's bash and... No, it's not the... The problem is not on the shell script. No, I the heard problem. that. It's on the API side. If I, uh, Yeah, but it's behaving in a strange way, I would say. So I'm not amazed that it's failing. It was working on, almost by accident, I would say. So... Okay, thank you. So now next subject is about JNLP agent JDK8, uh, if that's even a subject. So today, um, user told on metrics on two different 
um, what is called channels, that he was having a problem with the GNLP agent GDI telling that there was some class mismatch, uh, class version mismatch somehow, and he was wondering what was going on. So I managed to reproduce the problem on my machine, of course, then I went to Docker Hub and saw that it had been rebuilt just a few hours ago, which sounded strange to me because it was not supposed, supposed to be built. Again, we abandoned JDK 8 quite a long time ago, and these kind of repositories haven't been updated in more than one year, if I'm not mistaken. So how is it even possible that we got a new image created that doesn't work anymore? I'm not pointing the finger to anyone. I just wanted to understand that. I think, Damien, you traced the root cause of that, right? Yep. Just a slight thing I mentioned uh, that um, that issue is specifically on a set of what we call inbound example. This used to be GNLP agents and we were providing build tools like we have a Maven image, a Terraform image, a Golang image. This Images, Docker images have not been updated since years, functionally speaking. There, 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 we have a few pull requests, but these images are risky to use. Uh, there has been a, uh, no consensus on what direction to get from there. The problem is that they are built and deployed daily since the past three years. So the assumption about they should not be built is wrong. They should be built oh. and deployed and updated every day. First, that's important to set the expectation. It was expected because these images do not have a tag based, uh, let's say, a deployment policy. It's always latest version. So yes, it was expected they were rebuilt. They failed for today uh, or maybe since a few days, but it's recent. And we need to fix them on short term to not get the user cooked off guard before deciding of the future of this one. The fix will consist in at least releasing one last version before we drop GDK 11. The reason why it's failing, the root cause, is because it uses a latest agent version. So since we have latest agent version without the either with the wrong remoting version or an old version means that these images are broken. So we need to build and pin for the GDK 8 image to the latest known remoting version. And I think it's more than one year since this one. So clearly the image of that user has been broken or they did not update for one time. Yeah, they didn't do Docker pool, whatever. Okay. They never answered the question, what was the older version and what is the new one? That's important question though. So yeah. Uh, I propose that we fix them, at least the GDK 8 and 11, before we drop uh, the new agent or, or after, but soon. And then we decide about the future because it means either we had GDK 17 and 21 to the build matrix of this one and we start to clean it up and decide, or we stop publishing these images because that's the proper opportunity right now. Yeah, I think we tell in just about every channel and media we use that we are supposed to use the official update yep. uh, Docker images. Uh, so I don't know if there's a point of still updating them and keeping them up to date because they are a high security risk. And I... even if we took some time, we have better images to start with. No, right. we don't have better images. We have base images which are official yeah. and maintained the images on that repo are different the use case is people who don't want to customize their tools neither at the build time or at the right time so they use images already available for them so deprecating these images require a bit of cautious in terms of communication for us mm -hmm. because this user will say, hey, I, I had my Maven installed or my Terraform installed since years with my GDK8 and what should I do now? So that's why deprecating yeah, yeah, them yeah. and telling, okay, here is a Docker page of documentation, read me, notice, but we need to give them solution. And that's where the tricky part is. Yeah, so um, the user was asking, where is it written that it's officially deprecated? And I even don't know if it's officially deprecated. It's not um, a good practice to use them, but is it officially deprecated or not? It's not. Okay, not yet, not yet, not yet. 
yeah, it's not yet. But it's not. That's why I didn't answer to the user. Uh, someone else uh, gave them, but there is, looks like on each thread, we have to be careful. It's already complicated. We must be careful on which image, which information. That one, the one that the user complained about is not deprecated and should be working. Hence the proposal to have a fix. Yeah. We have to have a, a, a quick fix and then we'll think about that. I guess. Okay. Anything else about that? No, I think that, that's foreign. <laughs> that's all for me. Uh, we, we need to make actions, though. I don't yeah. mind working with you, Bruno, because you volunteered on the be my to fix. Yep. Uh, but we also need, need to to have actionable items for the depreci deprecation or update of these images with the GDK 11 remodel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll talk about that uh, more uh, two weeks from now, but we'll have done something by then, hopefully. No, the um, goal is to, the goal is to to we have to I think I believe either we speak about this and we decide or we do specific meeting and we provide the direction before acting. We should not deprecate and then discuss. That no, 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 of course that was not my goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I misunderstood. Then sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not the guy with a stamp deprecated who wants to stamp just about everything. No, no, <laughs> not my goal. Thank you, David. Yeah. Oh, you're that guy, Mike. Okay. Mark's that guy. <laughs> Mark is um, Mark is the killer and reaper of operating systems and other things. So, so I'm that guy. But uh, I agree, Damien's right. Uh, speaking of end of life operating systems, I know how much you love CentOS Seven, Mark. I had never never tried Fedora Thirty Eight, but I discovered that this week, and frankly, that's not my cup of tea. Um, so yes. The Jenkins project got uh, a new machine. Uh, it's a Milk 5 Pioneer machine. We got that thanks to some kind of conglomerate between some hardware vendors and the RISC 5 organization. So they gave to the Jenkins project, he, me, by the way, uh, the machine. And the goal was to evaluate uh, if Jenkins could run on the RISC 5 machine. Of course, we had already done some tests last year on some very more modest machines, and it was working. But I wanted to try it, uh, so I started it. Unfortunately, so it's Fedora 38, uh, but nonetheless, it works with the latest LTS form from Jenkins. And of course, thanks to the Timurian JDK 21, um, that's the first JDK, uh, the first LTS that is available for RISC 65, well, 64, sorry, from uh, Timurian. So I think we'll see other ones for the next LTS, but yeah, you can't do that with JDK 17, for example. Uh, so the first step is done. Uh, I don't know. I started the machine, but I didn't check if it was running. Just a second. Uh, there we go. Let's see that. Yes, it's still working. Very strong password. Come on. It's my laptop that is not really fast. Uh, the machine itself is <laughs> pretty good. Um, no. And as you can see, uh, Jenkins is not happy. Because of course... No, Jen is no... Jenkins is perfectly happy. You just have to dismiss that that operating system end of life. So, so they support Fedora 38. Are they supporting newer releases of Fedora with it or only 38 is the only one they actually support? This specific machine only runs on Fedora 38 for the time ah. being. And that's okay. Yeah, that's a bummer. But uh, I am in regular meetings with the rest of the folks about that kind of machine. And I know that some people from Fedora are already working for this machine and other uh, machines and Fedora 41 is working in, on lots of other machines. So if there's uh, the kernel and some which is specific to this machine that prevents us to use a more modern version of Fedora, but that's all. It's working uh, apart from that. And um, yeah, and it's just funny to see all the cores lighting up when I'm doing a compilation or something, you know, because there are 64 cores. So that's not a server, that's a workstation, but 
anyway, that's pretty cool. And the other problem I have is that uh, we don't have Docker. Of course, in Fedora, it's more Podman, but the Jenkins ecosystem is tightly linked to Docker, Docker Compose, Docker BLDX, uh, Docker Bake, and so on. So it would be difficult to port everything to Podman. So for the time being, I'm kind of stuck because I can't build the Docker. It doesn't work for me. So it's not time, I think, for Jenkins to move to RISC 5 yet, but someday. Anyhow, that was funny and interesting to me to see that we can run Jenkins on RISC 5 on a real machine and not just a tiny SBC something. And that's all that I had. Any feedback, folks? That's great. So congratulations. So it, it ran. You didn't find any disastrous problems. You didn't find any oh, here's this horrible thing that, uh, that's great. Yeah, Jenkins works great. The system in itself, not so much. I think I I broke X, X11 and something uh, 20 minutes after getting it, just by <laughs> updating packages. But for Jenkins itself, no problem. And frankly, this would be used as a server of or like a Jenkins agent. So why not? And if ever I manage to do something interesting, we could bring that to the table, to the FOSDEM uh, booth, if that's of any interest to anybody. Oh, that would be very interesting at FOSDEM. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Oh, damn and, deal. But also there is an, a side, if, a side uh, positive effect of your machine. It was a real life acceptance test of the work of Mark about depreciation <laughs> and we yes, do it live. Right. Well, and and it did not. It did not. Did it give? I didn't even look. Did it give a correct date? We've had two reports from users that the dates were wrong inside of one of those Let messages. Me but if if you show the the, does it tell you when it ended life? Uh, May twenty four five eighty. It's correct. Okay. Although I think that date now might need to be updated to the twenty first, but. Other than that, it's, yeah, that's great. Excellent. Thank you. So I still can't duplicate the bug that these two users reported, but two users have reported that they got a message that said 2099-12-31 yeah. or some such thing. Remember this bug. But... Anyhow, that's all that I had. Anything else you'd like to discuss before we wrap it up? No, no. We've got Damien who's going to do a, a, a oh, demonstration yeah, for us, right? Sorry, I took too much time. Go ahead, Damien. Okay, so let me Would you like to share your screen? screen? Yeah, I need to be allowed. Okay, so the and so the crucial thing here is that we're, there are two two repositories to release, right? Docker SSH agent and Docker agent. Exactly. And they use two different version numbering schemes, if I remember correctly. Absolutely. Okay. So just let me push my current commits uh for the update cli manifest for a ub9 being disabled okay i directly pushed on main which is absolutely good practice <laughs> <laughs> if you have no shame whatsoever yes it's an absolutely good practice i mean there, there are no proof we are not recorded we are not uh, in public <laughs> meeting no, no proof right. okay um hmm, main had recent pushes oh it oh, was oh. master branch you see you see that was a, that was a mistake <laughs> Kids, don't do that at home. I, I'm not sure I understand. That's just, all you have to do is pull and, and rebase if necessary, right? Exactly. And also, I will remove the main branch that I created. Okay. Let's reload. And master has been able... Okay. So I will have a pull request. Let's start with Docker SSH agents. Okay for you all? Yep. Yes. Excellent. So Docker SSH agent does not depend on remoting at all. Oh. Yes. As such, the release life cycle can follow, uh, let's say, a sane uh, version semantic, which is semantic version here, uh, which means each time we have a breaking change, we should increase the major version. If you have new features that are backward compatible, you increase the minor. And if you are doing bug fixes, security issue with no functional change, then you update the patch. We have set up the, as you can see, 
the um, automatic release drafter to calculate the version based on the pull request uh, we, we see here. So if you have the proper label, the proper pull request, then the new version will be calculated accordingly. Okay? So the process is, uh, if you want to, to release a new version, you go on the GitHub release, you edit the latest draft, you update anything that needs to be updated, and you publish the GitHub release. That's the same for both agents. You go, you publish, you check the version, and it will build and deploy the new systems. You have to be careful though, right now with that current method, there are no guarantee that the build in charge of building the images and deploying to Docker Hub is successful or failing. So you have to monitor it. So you publish the GitHub release and you wait 30 minutes and you check on the Docker Hub if the new image images are there. If they are not, then you send a message to the Jenkins Infra team and we will check if there is an issue on trusted CI or the build or whatever. So so Damien, just to be sure that, that mm -hmm. I caught that. So in this case, if I edited this release, changed its heading to 6.0.0 because it's a breaking release mm -hmm. and applied a tag at that point on the branch to match that 6.0.0, the act of saving that will eventually cause the one of the trusted machines, one of the one of the security sensitive machines, to act on that and generate a new release. Absolutely. So, so all I have to do as a maintainer here is create, declare this thing a release, and then the build process will start. And if the build process were to fail, I ask for help. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. The goal and was have... to have it simple. Yeah, go ahead, Bono. Yeah, sorry, I have a stupid question, but why isn't uh, already the title six dot something because there is a breaking change? Uh, because because oh. there is a label here that most probably has been applied. Oh, oh no, it. Uh, I thought it was applied after merging the pull request, which is not the case. Uh -huh. Good question. Then I would have expected. But but I don't know that release drafter knows about semantic versioning, does it? Um, the thing that we're using can, to draft the change logs, I, I wasn't aware that it knew semantic versioning that well. Uh, we we can we can have it. So it extends the existing policy, but we don't have uh, no version template major. So we don't have specific settings. So I'm gonna have a look on the inherited setup. Yeah. Okay. And from there, we will see how is, uh, how is it working. Uh, let me go on this one. So in .github, we have release drafter.yaml, which is the default uh, behavior. I see the adoc file, which is a documentation not updated since the past two years, so I will consider not trusted. I will read the code. So as you can see, Mark, oh, it says the next version, next minor is the default. And then you can associate breaking changes to breaking and it should uh, bump the version, the major digits. Hmm. Okay, but, so, but, but the fact that it didn't, it's still easy for us to correct. We just, breaking changes are not a frequent thing. So we simply exactly. do that. Now, is it okay if I do that now while everyone's here watching? Yes, absolutely. You can proceed. I just wanted to check which setting we have because we have the automatic breaking change on the infra. Okay. So I wonder what is the difference in the default release drafter. Okay. And, and you oh, it's result version. Okay, I see. Well, here it's a always bump. Okay. Okay, it's a difference of configuration. No, I was sense. expecting expecting something else, but yeah, you can proceed, Mark. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to create a new tag on the master branch. Oh, no, no, no. Six, no, no. No, no. No. You can directly do it from I'm doing it from GitHub. GitHub. Right, I'm doing it from GitHub, yep. but I'm okay. using their UI to create a new branch called 6.0.0. No, 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 no. 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 Everything is done through the GitHub release publication. Oh, then look at my screen. I'm going to do it once then. Okay, good. All right, go ahead. So I'm editing the draft release. As right. the, the admonition says, it's not visible unless you are a maintainer. 
right? Now you're going to click the drop down there, just like I was going to do, and you're going to replace 5.49.0 oh, with 6.0.0. Okay. I misunderstood. I took you. No, no, this is great. The... You do keep going because this way we okay. can show it and have it recorded. So 6.0.0, click create new tag, right? And now we change the text 6.0.0. Exactly. That one is the title of the GitHub release itself. Right. This one is the Git tag. Right. And then as we scroll down, I think there will be a button that says this is no longer a draft or a checkbox. Set as can... latest release. Now, oh, when you pick, click publish release, the button, it will know that this is no longer a draft. Is that right? There's not some exactly. other place we have to check. Okay. Exactly. Good. So publishing the release will create a tag. All right. Good. We will have okay. both objects. Okay. So now we have, so when we look at the releases in GitHub, we will see 6.0.0. And I should see it from mine as well. Yes, I see it on the top level page, release now. Great. Okay. And and then the machinery will eventually start. Thank you. That that shows yeah. how to do it for Docker SSH agent. Now Docker agents. Okay. Okay. Oh, we have free pull requests. Just so we have the new remoting and the others. Oh, cool. We'll have to merge or leave this one and proceed with the release. So I won't release this one and I will let you take care of that if that's possible, Mark. Since so it's not... just to be sure I understand the process, it's the same process, but in this case, the version string and the tag needs to be... So could you show the tags? To... Oh, no, show the, show the releases. To... Here we go. So this is the example. So instead of the simple... 6.0.0, mine will need to be some large string on the left, which is the remoting version, underscore, underscore, dash. oh, dash, exactly. dash one. Exactly. Okay, so the dash eight on the right-hand side is, means this is the, oh yeah, and there it is right below it. This is the eighth build, there's the seventh build. Okay, so eighth release, seventh release. So it will be remoting version dash one. And exactly. by defining that now, when you scroll all the way up to the to the the draft pull request or draft change, yes, here it is. Okay, so the draft change here has documentation updates, new features and improvements, maintenance items, and the breaking change. Yep. Good. Okay. So if we were to release now, mm -hmm. the version would be dash nine. Dash nine. Do we all agree okay. on this one? Agreed, it's not a, right. it's not for Mac it's just uh, since part of the recording right right and and it, it the the reason it will be a new remoting version is because of that pull request that's pending for the 3273 exactly excellent okay and and it's there's no harm in us waiting until all three of the pending pull requests are processed that way we get the most recent version of Debian and I forget what the other one was that was updating. Oh, and the most recent version of Git for, oh, he's had to patch Git for Windows. Okay, I'll yep. need to go get the latest patch for use in my uh, my environment. Good. If I'm not mistaken, it was uh, released on the 6.00 of the SSH agent. Oh, I'm oh not good. Sure if okay, it was so... the patch 1 or patch 2, though. Okay. It was 2.47.0. Oh. Good. All right. So I need to look at... Yeah, it was definitely 2.47.0. It's that dot two on the end that I'm not accustomed to. So, but that that tells because I think this one shows. Yeah, so Git patch version changed from one to two, and there was no other change on Docker Agent. Oh no, and, that was a dot, dot one on this. Okay, so we we would have been benefited on 6.0 to have run a. a, a Dependabot update because it should have found the dot two, yep. but yep. Good differences point. between dot one and dot two usually aren't are dramatic. The uh, the Git maintainer on Windows has found a bug and has fixed it promptly. Yep, makes sense. So th these are the basics. Um, I I propose that we speak about the potential improvement in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, 
one improvement that just want to I just want to plant the seed. That's something uh, that we are doing with Olivier Verde on update CLI. When you go on edit, in that particular case, we will want to have an automated process that uh, detect the version for us because human mistake happen will happen and happen in the past. So one of the potential improvement here will be set as a pre-release. With GitHub action, we can catch the event, the webhooks event, and we could trigger a specific workflow only for that case, which detects when there is a new release published, which is a pre-release, then do something. Mm. And the do something will be a create, determine the new tag, create the git tag, and publish it. So we could have that kind of process. Also, uh, we have other ways of triggering. We could have a regular update, there are numerous things, but I think publishing from here is really easy for the maintainers. So if we can do part of the work, that will, we could keep going like this. Great. I, I like the publish from here. The, the act of choosing to deliver a release is something that now is in the control of the repository maintainers, even though the build of the, the container image is absolutely outside of their control, right? It's in a secured mm -hmm. environment because it has to have credentials to push to Docker Hub. Perfect. Yep. That's great. And second thing, we need a feedback at the end. Something will be, uh, in the case of update CLI, we know the release is set as latest only once the, the trusted build has deployed everything on the right places. Mm. And then it adds back and it updates the release. We had a footer and we had binaries. So in the case of our images, Hervé Lemur had an idea a few months ago for the infra that could be absolutely working here. It will be, hey, we could have the trusted process once it successfully deployed to Docker Hub. It updated the release and had a footer such as Docker Hub images and the link to Docker mm -hmm. Hub which could be a way to have a feedback. If we see disappear on the release text, that doesn't change any binary, that doesn't override anything, but I think this will be, how oh, do we close the CI CD loop in that case? So if we don't see the Docker Hub link or the release we published some times ago, then it failed. Or we could just have trusted setting it from pre-release as latest release that could be it so so oh right okay that because then then the 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 maintainer says it's a pre-release and then and darren pope i think actually has some gh command line things he's doing to set some of these checkboxes exactly. so great okay yeah because trusted has the permission that doesn't extract any information out of the trusted zone that could be really safe. Mm -hmm. uh, but in that case, I'm not sure about the behavior of if you set as a pre-release, does it create the tag here? I'm not sure about how the world uh, create tag. Would it be a generic tag to be deleted at the end and we create a new one that will trigger the build that will, I, I mean, there are different options here, but we could have a quick and easy solution for now. Okay. Uh, anything else or could I stop screen sharing? That's everything. Cool. Thanks a lot for the explanation. That was really interesting. No problem. Cool. And that's all that we had in the agenda. Anything else? Nope. Looks like we're done then. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for your work, works. And the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. And see you two weeks from now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.